eight ways I reduce my phone addiction. This is like a very powerful method that I've kind of compiled over extensive research and reading a lot of books and I don't know, just, just experimenting with a lot of tools and methods and advices out there in the internet or even friends and even mentors. And yeah, the thing is that we spend way too much time in our phones. Before I wouldn't realize how much of an issue it was, but then like the older that I get and more priorities that I have, I have like this, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I have this really heavy loaded regret of just procrastinating and whenever I sort of journal or look back at my calendar and see how I spend my day, it usually turns out to be that I spent way too much time in my phone. And this is not only my problem, I'm sure it's probably a lot of people's problem. So in this video, I'm going to go over what are the eight ways I reduce my phone addiction and hopefully you will benefit from a couple of these methods. The first one is turn off all your notifications. I don't know why people turn on their notifications all the time. And, or they don't even bother to go in settings or open the control panel and turn it off. Like put it on airplane mode, put it on do not disturb mode. Put it on some other mode besides just leaving there with even ringtones off. Some people would not even consider turning off the ringtone. So like over here you have the phone, right? And yeah, it's just like they don't, they leave it like this. They don't turn it off, so it's crazy. And these like noise, ding, 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 these ringtones, at first it might not be that bothersome, but then over time it's going to be very detrimental for your focus and your attention and the things that you're doing. So turn off all your group notifications, turn off your social media applications, turn off, turn off all of those notifications. And even if you have, like, I don't know who leaves on their TikTok or Instagram notifications on with like likes and I don't know, views. <laughs> and that is so, I can't imagine. Your phone would just be like ding, ding, ding all the time. It would be insane. I don't know if you can live like that. Second is using the social media apps, like your favorite social media apps in your laptop instead of having it in your phone. So what I do now is how I use Instagram is I just use the Instagram.com instead of having it in my phone. I don't know if you understand that. I mean, in a way, it's not that appealing to use it in your laptop, but it really saves time. More. And I don't know, if I don't have it in my phone, I don't have that like urge to open my phone all the time and whip out, whip out my phone from my pocket and scroll all the time. I don't have that urge. So I rid that urge by just using it in their site instead of using it in my phone as an application. Trust me, by just doing this, your phone screen time will reduce drastically. It's crazy. So all your social medias, just use it in the website instead of having it in your phone as a native app. And if you like really need your phone, you don't even have a laptop, then another suggestion is this new app that is in App Store. I don't know if it's in Androids yet, but it's called One Sec App. And what that app does is it allows you to take like a deep breath before every time you open the app of what like whatever social media app you're using. You open your app and it will take like 30 seconds or maybe 20 seconds and you take like a deep breath and exhale and then at the end it tells you if you really want to open the app or not and that kind of like makes that resistance that friction of really making you think if you actually want to use the app or not uh, one crazy thing is <laughs> before I, I i opened my instagram like 25 times and the app told me so when you open up the app it tells you how many times you open the app and yeah <laughs> i opened it like 25 times third one is Keep your phone out of your sight as much as possible. So usually whenever I'm doing deep work, uh, which is a task or work that really takes a lot of cognitive demand from me, I would urge you to not use your, like don't have your phone in your sight whenever you're doing any sort of deep work. So like if you're opening your laptop and you, ha you have to do some work, emails or you have to do some schoolwork if you're a student, or you have to write an essay if you're an author, leave your phone behind your screen like behind the lid your screen lid and that way you don't you completely block the site from your phone and this is like a trick that uh, one of the youtuber you suggests his name is matt diavella and we have really really helpful tip actually i've been using i've been doing that for the past year and i've reduced my screen time by a lot it's insane how powerful and effective it is 
So just keep it back uh, behind your screen lid. Helps a lot, really useful. Another method is how to keep your phone out of your sight. It's just like, don't take your phone with you everywhere you go. I know like these days that smartphones are, like we need that phone for emergency reasons, but sometimes like just try to leave your phone in your room if it's not that urgent. Like if you're going on an errand and you have your credit card, like you only need your phone with you. Like you could just go and get the groceries or anything you need and yeah, just mind your day like that. The fourth way is to not have your phone in your pocket. Don't put your phone in your pocket. For me, I don't I don't usually put my phone in my pocket just because it's not fashionable or stylish. I don't like that chunky thing like coming out of my jeans, so I usually leave it in my bag. Yeah, just like not by having your phone in your pocket. It reduces so much because it's not convenient to open your bag every time you want to use your phone. The fifth method is to set your alarm for nighttime instead of morning time so like set the alarm for bedtime instead of a wake up time for the average pe person like most people you would leave um you leave your phone beside your bed it really tempts you to after you turn off the alarm you will most likely scroll your phone right after just because it's so convenient and you want that dopamine for an excuse to wake you up or some other reason or to be like updated because we need because we have a, a constant fomo and we want to be updated with what's going on around the world and if you have a phone beside you when you wake up your phone takes control over you instead of you controlling over the phone so instead what i do is i actually leave it across my room so i actually leave it over there and that's pretty far from my bed i just take like seven steps to get there i will set the alarm for bedtime instead of wake up time and just by doing that consistently my circadian rhythm has gotten used to waking up at that exact time in the morning instead of relying on the alarm and just by doing your bedtime and then you have your night routine as well so what I do is I take like a hot shower to kind of cool my body if you want to know more about that I recommend you listen to the podcaster Andrew Huberman from Stanford and he talks a lot about night routines and how you can really maximize to get deep sleep and that's what I do I take a hot shower and then I go to my bed I open my, my Kindle and then I read for a little bit until I feel sleepy and then I sleep right away and knock down cold. I get that deep sleep and yeah, really, really good quality sleep I get. The sixth way is to empty out your home screen on your phone. So when you open up your phone right away from lock screen to your home screen, your home screen should be empty. And maybe you would have four apps in your dock slider and that's it. Like only need those four most common used apps. And if you have the home empty, then it's less likely for you to be distracted and i don't know who does this but i never when i used to have social media apps in my phone i would never have it on the first page of my home screen i do not recommend you do that a lot of people do that and it's so distracting can't imagine and especially even the notifications on and you see the app with like number tags on top man not the way Seventh is to have a screen time widget on your home screen. So this is really, I did it a couple times. I did it many times actually. Throughout the year I had it on my screen time, but now my screen time, my home screen is just empty because Apple has that feature of whipping on the right or the left. You can just add widgets on the notification page instead. And that's where I put my screen time now. And yeah, really helpful. If you keep seeing your uh, screen time, of like how much you use the phone, then it kind of uh, convinces you to use it less. It's kind of powerful. I think it's a very useful tip because you get that feedback of how much you use it. And if you're like really conscious like I am with how much time you spend on your phone, then yeah, just seeing the numbers of how many hours you spent every day really helps you. And you get like the weekly average of how much time you spent, so really powerful. All right, lastly, number eight, don't use your phone the first thing in the morning. So this is like really, because um, I think if you if you start your day with your phone use of trying to be updated with what's going on around the world or scrolling through social media, I think it kind of convinces you to use it even more throughout the day and it kind of screws you over. So instead, what I would do is recommend you start learning something in the morning or go to the gym, work out, or like have some sort of routine, meditate or journal, like have some other routine that is prioritized before you ever touch your phone and 
and that way it will reduce your screen time over the day drastically. One of the YouTubers and podcasters, uh, Chris Williamson from Modern Wisdom, he kind of says over how you can like sort of take, like when you start your morning, be proactive instead of reactive. And if you keep that quote in your brain, then I think it's really, it makes you very self-reflective and aware of how you spend your day. And if you start your day with reacting to things, so what's happening around the world, instead of being proactive, taking initiative, and being the person that creates things instead of consuming, then I think it really makes your morning and your whole day more productive. What I do, my routine, it's very simple. I wake up, I journal, and then I meditate for 10 minutes. The app that I use is Medito, M-E-D-I-T-O, if I'm saying it correctly. Medito is a free app, really, uh, really good. Just listen to it uh, for 10 minutes, or if you have more time, you can just do it longer and keep that consistency of meditating and try to be more aware. It really makes you more calmer. And then I like doing their gratitude challenge. And yeah, I think it's for like 30 days. And then I also write the gratitude journal. So my journal is not, it's really simple. It's just three things that I'm grateful for, for the day. And yeah, that's it. I appreciate you for watching the video. Uh, more videos are coming up in the future. So thank you for tuning in and definitely subscribe if you like the videos. I'll see you next time.